Tanzania is located on the eastern coast of Africa, just below the equator. The backbone of its economy is agriculture, a climate change fragile activity. More than a third of households here live below the poverty line, with rural communities most affected. The livelihood strongly depend on ecosystem services such as agriculture, fisheries and forestry. Increasing climate variability such as floods and droughts, impact severely on subsistence farmers. Not only through the loss of income due to lost harvests, but also due to the increase of tropical diseases, particularly insect-borne ones like malaria in rural areas. The latest World Malaria Report, for example, shows that after a period of success in global malaria control, progress has stalled. Malaria case numbers are rising again, and in 2016, there were an estimated 5 million more cases than the year before. Malaria prevalence is highly influenced by climatic conditions that drive the abundance and seasonal dynamics of Anopheles vectors. But environmental changes which favor malaria transmission in one area may reduce it in another. The focus of our study was therefore on the impact of the 2016 El Niño and the following La Niña in the Quilombero Valley. In particular on mosquito abundance, malaria cases and mosquito host seeking behavior. All this information is essential to predict malaria transmission dynamics. Understanding the effect of climate on malaria vectors is crucial if we want to find solutions to mitigate impacts of climate change on vector-borne diseases and shed any light on seasonal changes in biting time of malaria vectors. The Quilombero Valley in Tanzania is a hotspot for malaria and can be taken as representative of many regions of intense malaria transmission in Africa. For 10 years, field entomologists working at the Ifakara Health Institute and the University of Glasgow have been trapping and collecting primary malaria vectors in four villages in the Quilombero Valley. This long record allows the exploration of the long-term relationship between malaria vector dynamics and environmental conditions. This data set was complemented by data acquired over the duration of this NERC project, from June 2016 to September 2017. For 18 months we collected the dominant malaria transmitting mosquitoes in and around houses, while also recording temperature and humidity at the household level and the local level with a weather station. Additionally, we also extracted malaria case records from the district hospital, even though their data turned out to be very patchy. We also witnessed the use of bed nets for other things than just bite prevention, possibly partly a reaction to the fact that malaria transmission is rising again in the Quilombero Valley, despite a near 100% bed net coverage and people, as a result, are becoming frustrated. Throughout our study, the general aim and the results were explained to the villagers who gave the consent for us to trap mosquitoes inside and outside their houses. At the end of the study, the overall results were communicated to study participants and village elders in Lupiro, the largest village in the study. These findings were also conveyed to officials working for the Ministry of Health in Tanzania through regular meetings with scientists from the Ifakara Health Institute. We hope that our findings will help to better predict malaria transmission dynamics. This information can then be used to inform present and new intervention strategies and so benefit the local communities not only here in the Quilombero Valley but also in other regions with intense malaria transmission on the rise. Oh, eh.
ね。